Okay, we got a grenade, which we can throw. Let's actually come on, save, compile, and we hit G. That throws a grenade out. And then you can cook a grenade. Hit C. You can hang on to it for a bit. And then let it go. Oh, we're Ooh, we got hurt. Killed him though. He despawned. So yeah, let's uh Let's dive right into it. Okay. Now, I think I'm just going to make the grenade that gets thrown and blows up. That way you guys, if that's all you need, uh, then you can leave. But then I'll, yeah, I'll fancy it up a little bit if you want to stick around after that. So let's get started. I need a grenade. I need something to throw. So let's make an actor need actor and I think all it needs is static mesh. Static mesh. I'll just call it Grenade mesh, that's good enough. And we can make an editor sphere. Or sphere. Yeah, let's lock that up. We get point one. Yeah. And then simulate physics. And its mass should be uh, 0.5, half a kilogram. Okay, now we need logic. Yeah, we need that logic. We have a first person template. We want to make sure we want to cast cast to the first person character, and then the object will be get player character. And let's make let's make a variable out of this player ref player reference. Add a force when this when a grenade comes into play. We need to add add a force to the mesh grenade mesh. Right? Yeah. Add a force to the grenade mesh. <clears throat> and the force we need to add needs to be the forward vector of something we have not created yet. So let's go open the first person character. And in the viewport, we want our grenade to be like out here. It's about right there. We're gonna start it from the camera. So we're going to add a scene component on the camera, and it's going to be called grenade spawn point. This is a good name, I guess. I suppose maybe. And grenades will all spawn from right here. Save and compile. We'll save and compile here as well. So now, on the first person character, we should be able to access that. 
That is the grenade. Spawn. Hmm. It's just get. We should that would be at the bottom, right? Get grenade spawn point. <laughs> I knew that. So we're gonna get the world rotation. Get world rotation. And then we need the forward vector of that. Get forward vector. And then the force we're going to add to that, that we're going to multiply to that, is about 15, 15,000 from experience. <laughs> and that will be the force we apply to it. That's when the grenade spawns into the world. It's just going to put itself at that node and throw itself forward. You know what? We can try that right now. Save, save. Oh no, we can't. Well, we can, but uh, yeah, that's a little, let's try the G key. And then we're just going to spawn actor from class grenade. And it's like, where do you want to spawn it? We would like to spawn it at the grenade spawn point location. Should work. Uh, save, save, play. I hit G. Yeah. Throws a little, throws out a little ball. That does nothing right now. We're just, uh, we're just a ball spawner. Okay. Let's go back to grenade. We need the grenade to do something. So the first thing we needed to do is have a fuse. Let's add a variable. Call it fuse. And it's going to be a float. So now we can put a delay. Because that's all a fuse is. We say delay. And let's plug it in. So this is a variable. So this is accessible by other things. So this is this is important. You like why you wouldn't want to type it in? Because this like if you cook a grenade down to however many seconds and then throw it, that however many seconds were left needs to get loaded into that. So that's good. Now, yeah, the grenade needs to throw out a bunch of line traces. So we're gonna need a we're gonna need a line trace by channel. Line trace by channel. Visible. The starting point needs to be the grenade for every line that comes out. I think we're just gonna, yeah, we'll just drag that back in. Um, get world. Get the world location of that physics object that went rolling off. And then that's the start. Now the end needs to be added. It's going to be 
where the grenade is. Plus a bunch of random numbers. <laughs> so what we need to do, uh, yeah, looks like I've got a variable called frag range, frag range. Oh, why do I always do that? I need a variable called frag range. <laughs> Frag range. I think that is set to yeah, it's like ten thousand, which is a good distance for frags to go in a game and in real life. They would die down after that point. But that's how long. That's the the random maximum length our our lines will be for checking if they hit something. And we need random numbers. So I'm gonna make a vector, yeah. We'll make a vector, make vector. And these will be random. Now X and Y are on a plane like a circle and then Z is the height. We don't want the Z to go below zero because then it's just going to be like th it's going to be blowing frags into the floor. We don't really want that. We just want the player to get hit with frags or AI. So I usually set this to one. Uh, or a minimum of one. And you'll see. These can be the same. So we want a random float within a range. This one's gonna go to, to the X and Y. That's gonna create a circle on the floor. And yeah, so the maximum will be the frag range. The maximum number it will generate is 10,000. The minimum number it will generate will be uh, it's times negative one. Yeah, because X and Y go positive, negative, blah, blah, blah. That makes a, a circle on the floor. And then the Z needs to be from one to 10,000. So frag minimum range, I think. Yeah, we'll make another one frag min range. Let's save and compile. Get. So Z is gonna have a different one of these. That way it doesn't go below the floor. Frag minimum range is here. We're gonna make that eh, one. That way it's not shooting line traces through like a lot, like right under your toes. This will this will raise it off the floor one unit. That way all frags have an opportunity of actually hitting you. And then the max needs to be ten thousand high. That makes a hemisphere above the floor, like if you turn a bowl upside down. That keeps them from going underneath the floor, yeah. That's finished, I think. That looks good. Yeah, we're not doing damage right now. We're only gonna create a loop That's how many frags we want and how many times we want it to loop. So we need a variable called frag amount integer and then frag. So the loop is going to happen out here, 
And we're gonna set, and then we need a branch. Actually, yeah, let's set first. Frag loop minus one. And is the frag loop greater? Is the frag loop greater than the frag amount? And the frag amount, I think, like a couple thousand is what I got it set for. 2,000 frags. So we can check. So the frag loop starts out at zero. It, oh, I don't want a minus, I want a plus. Damn, let me get rid of that. Starts out at zero, and then we add one to it every time. And then it's gonna say, is zero greater than 2,000? <laughs> no. Then that's gonna cause us to create another frag. And that should run 2,000 times in an instant. And it will create 2,000 randomly directioned frags. When it's done, we're going to need to, yeah, we can play a sound at the location, spawn an emitter, and then destroy. So when 2,000 frags have spawned, we can play sound 2D. And Unreal Engine comes with X, comes with an explosion. Or spawn, yeah, spawn sound at location. That's what we want to do, where the grenade is. Uh, play Play sound at location. And that needs to play at the grenade mesh. Okay, we'll leave location. And then we want to spawn emitters. One emitter at location. We want that to spawn at the at that location. And the emitter we want is explosion. And then we can destroy the actor. Destroy the grenade. see what's happening. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Oh. Blew up right away. I mean, that's what we want, though. I mean, not that, but um, our fuse was zero. We forgot to set that to five. Well, I forgot. <laughs> Save. Play. G. Okay, so five seconds and then bang. That's a lot of red. Is that supposed to be that way? Maybe it was in the floor a bit. Was it in the floor? Oh no, red is no hit. Oh, look at that. It's, there's only half of it. Uh, that's weird. Hey, 
Yeah, it's only doing... Oh, it's only doing that. That's crazy. Grenade. Pardon me. Hello. Random float in range. Oh, the same float. I need two here. I need an identical one above. Each one needs its own. Each one of these needs its own. I see. Cut. Connect. Minimum is this one. Maximum is this one. There we go. We should get a half. Half a sphere. There we go. It's exploding in all directions, but not below. We can actually see if we do this and eject. Yeah, there's nothing going below the floor. It all goes up. Nice. So that's the grenade exploding. Now we need to cook it. <clears throat> and to cook it, I kind of you kind of need to see what you're cooking. But uh, we want to use that marker. This thing we put down. No, not that thing. This thing. On this thing, we also want to put a static mesh. We can call this grenade proxy, I guess. And the mesh we want to use is the same. We're going to use editor. can be 0.1 as well, 0.1, but we need it to have no collision. And we want to start out invisible. Save. Yeah, it's not there. Okay, and now we can cook cook a grenade I think on event begin play if I can find it yeah let's grab this out event begin play we need to a widget get player controller we don't have the widget yet though we're gonna promote it to a variable this will be widget graph to the viewport we need to go make this widget let's call it main widget save everything now we should be able to add it Right there. So we got a widget stored. Now when we press C, let's open that widget real quick. Let's put text here, text here. And a horizontal box. Let's put 
those on the side. That text box can say fuse and maybe a colon. Padding of five. That text can have a padding of five. And then we can drag the horizontal box somewhere. Yeah, right there. Horizontal box. Let's call it fuse box. Ha ha ha. box. And then it needs to start not visible or hidden. It needs to start hidden. Save compile. Save. So here we need to vis uh, set visibility of the widget to visible when we press C. And then the grenade proxy. Visibility, set visibility, visible. Um, then we need to start counting down. So we need variables for fuse. Fuse count. And then fuse total. Yeah, fuse count and fuse total. So when I press C, we need to start counting. Set. Get. Must be a branch. Yeah, branch. Uh, minus. Save, compile, we'll say five seconds. Let's also make a Boolean called Throne. Grenade, um, Boolean. When we throw a grenade, grenade will be thrown. Every loop we're, we're going to check. Has the grenade been thrown? No. We're going to count a second down. We're going to count down. And I think we need to put a delay first of one second. feeds in. This goes to this. I think we can come here. Yeah, so has the grenade been thrown? No. Take us take one off the count. Wait a second. Has it been thrown? Take a second. Off. So basically, if we press C, it starts the loop. And if we press G, the grenade gets thrown. 
and the next trip around it checks. Has the grenade been thrown? Yup. It has. Set the fuse count back to the fuse total. Or let's create a grenade. And this is where we can pass on the fuse count. The grenade has a fuse. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's that type. Fuse. F-U-S-E, set the fuse on the grenade to the fuse count. And then take the fuse count here and set it to a get on that and a set on that. Put the get into the set. Connect that up. That re that resets me. Uh, let's see what that does. Oh no no, let's go to the main widget. That text block right here that needs to be bound. Text block. Bind. On event construct. Get player character. Promote the variable player ref. And here, player reference. Try it out and see what happens. So I th throw a grenade. Now if I try to cook a grenade, it doesn't show. Oh, when I threw it, it didn't go away. First person, so when I throw a grenade, I need to set the visibility of the grenade proxy to uh, nil. Because if it's not visible, it won't matter. But if it is visible, it'll go away. There's no sound playing. Save, compile, grenade. Oh, I didn't select the sound. <laughs> Explosion. And I guess we can turn off the line traces. So G, that's a grenade. Yeah, 
G throws it. Oh, that's so good. I don't think that, I don't think that countdown's going over the so player reference, which is me, fuse count. Oh, I started it off hidden. I wanted to show the fuse box in the player character. I have my widget ref. Oh, I am. I'm setting it visible. Edit to the viewport. Main widget, yeah. Visible. Huh. Yeah, that should be showing up. I hit C and it doesn't show up at all. Bummer. Mm. Troubleshoot. Fuse box. Oh. That's what we want. Fuse box. Make it a make it a variable. Fuse box is selected is a variable. Save compile. connect to it. A widget object reference is not compatible with main widget. Main widget. Why would it not be? Okay. Whatever. Let's try that. Well, it's not counting. Did I not loop it? Hmm. Yeah, it's looping. Fuse count. Fuse count. Fuse count is five. Fuse total is zero. That needs to be five as well. Yeah. Oh, 
this should work, maybe. Let's see, there we go. Four, three, two, one. Oh, let's set back to that. So that didn't carry over. Fuse count. Maybe a delay here. Point one second. Give the grenade time to accept the count before being reset to a new account. Four, three, two, one, boom. Nope. Grenade. What is your fuse set for? Okay, let's set visibility of the fuse box to hidden. See what happens here. So we hit cook. Two, one. It should be bang, but it didn't. I wonder why. Fuse. We can do that. Instance editable expose on spawn. Cook. Three, two, one. No. Oh, it's passing through. Oh, I exposed it on spawn. See if that does it. Cut, cut, cut. We'll pass the variable along. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cook it. Three, two, one. And there we go. Okay, that works. We can hit G, and it's a full five seconds. And if we cook it, oh, it's not counting down. Oh, that's another thing. So. When we push G, it says that the grenade has been thrown. So when it comes down here to cook another one, it says the grenade has been thrown. So I think all we have to do is go grenade thrown, set to no. There's no grenade been thrown now. The end of it all. That should do it. And throw a grenade.
cook it. Two. Cook another. Oh, it did it at three. Hmm. Reset the number. So when we throw, take the fuse count. Oh, yeah. Take the fuse count and reset it back to total. I think that needs a delay. Cut, cut. There needs to be a delay right there. We'll delay 1.1 second. Just in case. That lets this finish. And then it'll reset grenade. Well, no, this needs to go here for sure. And this needs to go here. Cut everything. Cut. Delay. And then do things. Uh, uh. Cook. Cook. There we go. It's reliable. And that's it. That's how you do that. Um, thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos. I hope this helps you make your game. Bye.